Mayong adlaw sa tanan, magandang araw sa lahat. Good morning everyone! Welcome to another learning video on this channel. My name is Alvin P. Escamo, a BS Ed English 3 student of Negros Oriental State University, Shatan Campus. Today, I will be going to discuss to you the philosophical thoughts on education. But before that, here first are the objectives that we will be achieving at the end of this topic. First, for our knowledge domain or our cognitive domain is we will be able to discover at least three philosophical thoughts on education. For our psychomotor domain, we will be able to create a table summary showcasing the significant contribution of these three philosophers. And for our affective domain, we will be able to reflect on the importance of these philosophies and education. So, kicking this off is our motivation, which goes this way. Recall on your previous topics in high school or perhaps now in college. Who are the philosophers that you have known and what do you think are their philosophers? Philosophies, rather. So, if you think of Confucius, and, the, and his philosophy, which is Confucianism, which is, deals about the religion that all of the people believe in, then you're probably right. If you are also thinking of Aristotle, then you are also right. So today, I will be going to um, discover or introduce three philosophers and their philosophy in and their contribution to the field of education. So, first is our, the definition of what does it mean when we, when we say philosophy in education. The original meaning of the word philosophy comes from the Greek word philo, which means love, and sophos, which means wisdom. So when someone studies philosophy, they want to understand how and why people live or do a certain things and how to live a good life. So in other words, they want to know the meaning of life. So philosophy of education is the branch of applied or practical philosophy concerned with the nature and the aims of education and the philosophical problems arising the educational theory and practice. So for the succeeding slides is we will now be um, discovering who are the three philosophy philosophers and their contribution in the field of education. So the first philosopher that I will be introducing to you is John Locke in the year 1632 to 1704. He is also called the empiricist educator. So what does it mean when we say empiricist or empiricism? So it means the knowledge of the world based on one's experience. So according to Locke, we acquire knowledge about the world through our senses. So what are our senses? Our sense of sight, smell, the taste, the hear, and our sense of touch. So according to him, we learn. Um, we learn by doing and by interacting with the, the environment. According also to him that um, when we were still a child, or a child was born as tabula rasa, or also called as the blank slate. So meaning to say that, for example, a paper or a bond paper, a sheet of bond paper without nothing on it. It's a blank, of course. We know what's a blank bond paper. So he said that our mind is in a blank slate, meaning to say that through our experience, we gather the idea. And that's how we learn to reflect and generalize things. So for example, um, a bird. So when we were still a child, we don't know what is what is a bird like what is it doing so when we step out in our house and then we interact with and we interact with it so that's how we use as our sense of sight so we can see that oh a bird is flying or someone or something is flying in the sky so we can now draw to the conclusion that oh maybe or that's a bird so that's reflecting that comes in so in life so the next one is the inductive method so same with same with how i i 
said last time that we acquire knowledge from a simple simple idea to be to, to towards becoming complex so that's inductive method so according also to John Locke he questioned the long traditional view that knowledge came exclusively from literary sources from particularly from the Greek and the Latin classics because he believed that learners learn from authentic for authentic experiences and they are active agent of their own learning so he really exemplify or illustrate that um, it is only through experience we can get the idea of the world and he negated the divine rights of the kings meaning to say that he don't believe that when the father is a politician and the child would autom automatically become a politician as well when he grows up that's the point of um, John Locke because he believed that we are all capable to rule or to govern a certain people moving on to our second philosopher we have Herbert Spencer in the year 1820 to 1903 he is known for utilitarian education so what does it mean when we say utilitarianism it means a theory of morality that advocates actions that foster happiness or pleasure and oppose actions that cause unhappiness or harm. Say that an action or a utilitarianism say that an action is right if it results in the happiness of the greatest number of people in a society or a group. So Herbert Spencer believed that societies develop through a process of struggle so in a society that we struggle and for that's for us to that's for our existence and fitness for our survival which he coined the term and referred to as the survival of the fittest so i know that you are all familiar with this right so the utilitarian perspective of education focuses on producing students who will be able to fit into society at an elite level and contribute as a productive citizen. So that is why as teacher or all teacher should teach utilitarianism to teaching because it is looking out for the greater good of the people. And that's according to Burns in the year 2016. So that means that in a classroom setting, the teacher will do whatever it takes to make sure that majority of the class is succeeding academically. So, as a brief um, summarization, I know that you are all familiar with what is survival of the fittest, right? And I believe we come up to the notion that it is only those who are the fittest who will survive. That it's only those who are strong who will survive. But it's actually not. Because in here, teachers will, do, will be doing their best to cater the needs of the learners so that all of them could function and to be to be productive members in that society. And we are now down to the final philosopher that I will be introducing to you and that is John Dewey in the year 1859 to 1952 and he is known for his philosophy the learning through experience. So he believed that education is a social process and that schools are related to the society that it serves as a social agency where its main function is to shape human behavior and character. So it is important that a school is the one who will shape and hone the character of every individual. So this is not new to us because we are also part of a, a school school where they really have um, shown the and teach us the correct knowledge of um, especially the correct values of life so in addition so an education is a social process and that the school is a tool for the students to participate and to demonstrate their knowledge and the teachers are also a great um, contributor to the learning of the students. So the school is a special environment established by the members of the society 
for the purpose of simplifying, purifying, and integrating social experience of the group so that it can be understood, examined, and used by the children. So we can agree with it that our school have helped us towards becoming who we are today. They are the one who believe and believe our potential that we can do things beyond our capabilities. So, a school encouraged to participate everyone regardless of the social status that they have. So, it is very important that a school must be inclusive to all. It does not discriminate individual. It does not look for the economic status of an individual, but it's fair. And we believe that that's um, the, all the schools have been doing that, right? So, a school should focus on the students' abilities to participate in the community. The schools should inculcate on the learnings of the students, especially in participating in solving the issues of our society. So they have to do research to solve the problems, of course, and to apply solutions. So according also to John Dewey, he did not disregard the wisdom of the past because he believed that um, the past have helped um, shape the future, of course. And for him, ideal learners is the one who does not only learn by doing. He, lear he believed that a student does not only learn from conducting experiment, but also connect to accumulated wisdom of the past to the present. So he believed that the past have also um, made a significant contribution to the, th the things that we have today or we have done today in the present. That would also give a greater benefit in the future. So as a conclusion, John Locke, Herbert Spencer, and John Dewey are three of the most influential and renowned philosophers of their time. Locke believed that experience has influenced our consciousness from a blank slate to simple ideas and eventually to complex ideas that formed our experiences where we reflect on the things that has happened on the world. Spencer believed that social progress occurs when individuals struggle to achieve their self-interest and that competition is the driving force of society. Dewey, on the other hand, argued that education must be relevant to the world around us and that it should be focused on problem solving. be it should be focused on problem solving rather than route learning. Each of these philosophers had a unique view on the world and helped to shape modern society. Through their philosophies, they have left a lasting legacy that continues to have an impact on our lives today. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I do hope that you have learned something from my video. And thank you once again and may God bless us all. Have a great day ahead.